Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. I'm Sonu, co-founder of Shopper.com. And I'm just going to wait here a couple of minutes and allow everybody to join in. And then very shortly, we will start with our webinar today. All right, let's begin. So hello, hello everyone, and welcome to our webinar. I am Sonu, co-founder of Shopper, and some of you may already know me. Uh, for others who don't uh, know what Shopper is about, so Shopper is one place for affiliate marketing. So it's a place where you can, whether you're a beginner or uh, or in at advanced level, you can use different tools that we provide to scale your affiliate marketing at scale. So you can collaborate with 25,000 brands instantly, or you could have uh, one place for uh, organizing all your product collections and managing all your links. You get uh, link break notifications whenever the links break. So it is basically one platform where you can use different tools to scale your affiliate marketing. So let me start with the uh, webinar today. So when we launched Shopper almost five years back, we had a vision where we wanted to create a community of shopping enthusiasts and the marketers and staying true to our vision, here we are. So we have a community of thousands of bloggers, creators, influencers, affiliate marketers, and uh, deal hunters in our community. And one of the things that we are quite fortunate to have is the learning experience from them. Because we see thousands of affiliate marketers and creators and influencers make money, uh, last year we decided that we want to share those insights and knowledge with the wider community so that everybody can actually uh, benefit from our learnings from the creators in our community. And that's when we launched the webinar series for Shopper. We have already done a few webinars in the past, including the do's and don'ts of affiliate marketing and how to generate $1,000 with 1,000 visitors a month, uh, just to name a couple of topics. The topics that or the points that were covered in uh, previous web webinars, some of them include like, you know, identifying or bringing traffic that has high purchase intent or traffic that has intention to buy and how to display products that you can uh, increase your conversions by at least 25 percent, how to use price comparison tables to your benefit and so on. So one of the things that we've realized is that uh, or as affiliate marketers, you may also know that in order to make the dollars rolling in, it takes time, effort, and perseverance. Affiliate marketing is not a game where you start something today and tomorrow you will start seeing results. You need to be consistent. You need to be there for your audience. You need to build a community around you. And sometimes it's all about like, you know, finding that niche product or the niche category or building a community around you, building the giving the valuable information and insight to your audience so that they start uh, trusting your views and your recommendations. And you actually are able to build a loyal community around you and it's also about like doing the online promotions that uh, even brands can see and they can measure so affiliate marketing is all about like you know being there and everybody knows the dynamic nature of the space particularly with the google updates and the way algorithms change we know how they affect the search engine rankings and for us to stay on top of the game there are certain strategies that work 
to work well and some of the strategies that used to work well in the past may no longer really work in the current scenario so last time when we did our webinar we had quite a lot of questions around like you know how to promote products because a lot of the influencers and the creators affiliate marketers they know what products they want to promote but often times they don't know how they should be promoting it some of the affiliate marketers are even confused like what products they should promote and how they should even identify how to promote the products and earlier a lot of uh, marketers used to use google trends as one of the ways to identify the trends but now it has become difficult because most of the searches product searches used to happen on google it was quite easy for us to do the uh, search queries there to understand the keyword uh, do the keyword search understand uh, do some research and understand what are the trending products but now the search happens a lot on the other channels as well including like the tiktok youtube and instagram and that is where we feel that the way we do affiliate marketing now also needs a bit of a shifting so the principles the core principles may still remain the same of building a community of like you know having a loyal follower base building the trust and establishing your credibility as an authority in your niche but some of the ways we do it may have actually uh, changed a little i have prepared a short presentation here that i'm going to share with everybody now is everybody able to see my screen if you can then can you please put a thumbs up because last time i know when i had started the presentation some of you were not able to see the scene so please put a thumbs up in the chat so i will know that you are able to see my screen okay so today the topic of webinar is about mastering the art of affiliate marketing and understanding the strategies that will work in 2023 like i was saying that there were a lot of people okay i've got a message it's not visible okay perfect you can see my screen okay so like i was mentioning last uh, webinar when we did we were asked a lot of questions about how we can actually promote the products that hide the higher chances of conversion and how to how to identify those products because i was like i just mentioned a couple minutes back that earlier google trends was one of the go to tools for affiliate marketers to identify the trends to understand the products that are high converting how to identify them what are the categories what are the niche that people should actually be looking into and as you know a lot of the people are now into affiliate marketing as a side hustle so the space is quite competitive and is very crowded so for affiliate marketers to stay on top of the trends is essential for them to understand some of the strategies that are definitely going to work because we can always experiment we can do the permutations combinations learn from the trials and errors but always we don't have that uh, uh we don't have that benefit where we can just let some of the time pass and then just keep experimenting so some of the times we want to just start with the strategies that are definitely going to work so in this particular master class today i'm going to cover uh two things one how to identify the trending products and two i will cover five strategies that will uh, uh that will help you promote these products so first thing is about like you know identifying the trends and it's always about like you know how you can find the products or the niche that are going to be uh, working and how you can make more money from so what happens generally in affiliate marketing and when you are starting or you have already started we always emphasize like you know finding that right product or that ni right niche where your audience will have a better connection with and you can actually understand what's going to work what's not going to work generally like if you remember when the social channels like youtube tiktok and uh, instagram started people were using more these platforms as an entertainment channel where everybody was coming to these platforms and they were consuming the content purely for the entertainment purpose and at that point little did we know that they could probably become one of the biggest channels or biggest drivers of the revenue for the brands and that is what we are seeing now that these uh, platforms are more used for the 
uh, revenue generation purposes rather than purely for the entertain entertainment purpose. And most of the content or the product that goes viral goes so because of the exposure to the social media channel. So it's very important that whenever we want to understand the trending products or the trending categories, it's important to stay connected to the social channels. It's important to know like where your, uh, uh, influ uh, where your audience hang out and what sort of uh, products or the categories the influential people are talking about on those channels. Because generally these influencers or people who are uh, in, have decent influence in the industry will have a pulse on the market and they'll be able to talk about the products based on the consumer preferences. So following the content from such people and uh, following the hashtags or the viral content is always going to help you in spotting the trends. And what you could also do, like, you know, once you understand that certain categories or certain niche products have a higher chances of uh, or are getting talked a lot on the social channels, you can actually enrich that information with some of the other uh, research tools that you can use. So for example, you can look into the social channels as the obvious one where uh, you can try to find the trends, but you could also uh, explore the marketplaces and the e-commerce platforms like Amazon, Alibaba or Etsy. And Shopify has a blog where they have a dedicated section of uh, trending products. So that could also be a very good starting point for you where you can start looking into the uh, products that are trending and pay special attention to the products that have shown uh, an upward trend in the recent past because the, those would be the product that will create a lot of buzz in the consumer community. They will be the product that will be talked about a lot in different channels and on the different forums. So whenever you're looking into some product or when you want to spot the trends, don't restrict yourself to just one particular channel. So earlier, I know of the affiliate marketers who will purely rely on the Google Trends. And that was a very good tool uh, at that point because most of the searches used to happen on Google. But now with the social channels, a lot of the searches are happening outside of the uh, Google in YouTube, Insta, and uh, TikTok. And that is where we say that you can take it as an indicator but you shouldn't solely rely on what the Google Trends is saying if you have the option to check on other platforms as well. And then another interesting way for you to identify the uh, uh, trends is also to look what the affiliate networks are talking about. Because a lot of the times these affiliate networks also publish a report and they talk about the latest products or the products that are converting high or the brands that are paying the higher conversions or paying the higher commission rates. They do list about those products and the brands. So some affiliate networks may do once every week, some may do once every month, some may do once every quarter. So it's always good to understand the pulse of the market from different channels. And spotting the trends is really a dynamic process. And it's not something that you can just do once and sit back and relax for the next one year or two years, thinking that whatever you understood is what going to like, you know, carry on. So the trends change a lot. The products change a lot. So it's always important where you are trying to stay on top of it. So be dynamic, be open to learning new things, be open to uh, exploring new opportunities. Because when you do the research, when you look into the Shopify blogs or e-commerce platforms, you may come across certain products that may fit well with your niche, but you may not have really spotted it. So I'll just give you a quick example on that. So for example, if you are a creator who is into promoting a lot of pet food, so you may always be trying to, so you may be promoting pet food and you may use different brands, you may use different products to promote it. But what happens, your audience is definitely interested in pet food, but you also have an opportunity where you can actually widen the horizon of your affiliate income and you can start talking about the insurance for pets because your audience are interested in pet related products you could actually experiment that instead of just talking about pet food what if you start talking about the pet insurance or you start talking about some vet services for the pet so it's about like you know where you try to slowly and gradually see what other products can also fit well with your uh, uh, in your niche so now that we know how to identify the uh, 
trending products or the trending niche, let's learn about the five strategies on how to promote the content. So once you know that you are going to promote a certain product, it's all about how to actually promote it, how to get the maximum leverage or conversions for the content you create. And one of the things that's working quite well for our community is like the snackable content. So snackable content is the bite-sized content. It can be in any format. It can be in format of short videos. It could be GIFs, images, or it could be infographics. But for the purpose of this webinar, I'm going to focus only on the short form videos because that is what is working quite well for our community. And that's something I want to highlight in this particular uh, uh, webinar today. So snackable content or like the bite-sized videos have been working quite nicely for our community for one reason that the attention span of our consumers or the audience is reducing day by day and they don't really have that sort of attention what they used to have earlier so for example earlier people could very easily watch a youtube video for like 30 minutes or 35 minutes and stay quite engaged but now in the fast-paced life people have very short attention span and that is one reason why you should create these crisp uh, bite-sized videos because they are going to be visually appealing and they are really short. And you need to have a very good first impression. So always try to use the images that are quite high resolution, nice images. It will be appealing because the moment people like that image or the moment people click on your video, if you're able to give good information in the first three to four seconds, then the chances of people listening to rest of the video is very high. And then for them to interact or engage with the content is also going to be higher. And what happens like, you know, the bite-sized videos, because of the nature they are, they are quite short and they are really like, you know, you can include the content that you really like. They are also quite cost-effective. Because imagine having to like, you know, create a long form video versus a short form video. And also what happens with the bite sized videos, you can use the same content on different channels. So you can use it as an Instagram reel, or you could also have it as a YouTube short. So that way you're able to widen the reach of your audience with the same content. So you don't have to really recreate the content for different types of audience. You can use the same content on different channels, just repurpose for that uh, use. And also the good part about the short form videos is that they are mobile optimized. Now the dominance mobile devices have in our lives, we know that a lot of the times uh, users consume the content on the go and in a very short blusters of time. So for us to grab their attention as affiliate marketer is important to create the content that will seamlessly fit with their behavior. So if we have to create something, let's say for 15 to 20 seconds, it will very easily uh, fit with the behavior of our end users because they're used to uh, consuming the content in that short span of time. And with mobile optimized screens in the vertical format, it just converts well because people interact it. So even if somebody is busy with work or they are traveling or they are out on shopping, very it's very easy for them to just consume these uh, short snippets of videos or the information. And because it's available on the go, it's quite simple to consume. You don't really have to keep any time, dedicated time aside that, okay, because I want to do some product review or I want to understand what that product is about. Okay, I have to keep 30 minutes aside or one hour aside. It's like, you know, within five seconds or 10 seconds, you are able to make up your mind whether this product is for you or it is not for you. And once you have got the attention of the person and if the product is for that person, the person is for sure going to look at the product uh, affiliate link that you have posted there, go to the product page, do more research and probably buy from there. So that way, by creating these short snippets of product information or customer uh, feedback, you can actually grab the attention of the users. And one of the interesting thing about creating this bite-sized video and why it works so well with some of the affiliate marketers is that as per the report from TikTok, almost 50% of the users are above the age of 30 years. And these users then also have the high purchasing power. So potentially when you are promoting something to them who are already in their jobs or they're making money or they have already settled in their lives, they would have purchasing power. So if you're able to target them with their busy work schedule, they may be busy with their family, they may have some other personal commitments. If you are able to serve them something really short and quick and crisp, they're more likely to just engage with it. And because of their purchasing power, very high chances of them buying something from there.
And like I was mentioning that you can actually repurpose the same content for different channels. So it's not like because you have created a 45 minutes long video. Now, when you want to put something on Instagram, you have to now record something else or for YouTube, you need to record something else. You can just repurpose the same content. And this is where the success of the uh, bite sized content comes in place. Now the question is like, you know, how often should you be uh, posting that content and what all information can you include in that content? So one thing that we have seen with the uh, affiliate marketers who are doing quite a tremendous job at creating the bite-sized videos is that they create at least one video about the product promotion every day. So they can do more, but one video per day is like bare minimum. And because these are quite short and sweet, it doesn't take like hours and hours of editing and recording and re-recording and writing the script and everything. It is pretty, pretty short and sweet. Like, you know, you can record anything from 15 seconds to 60 seconds at max. You don't have to really go anything over. And the type of content that uh, creators use in recording the videos is really as per your imagination and your creativity. So sky is the limit. You can actually choose to put the content or the information that you really want to resonate with your uh, audience. So for example, a lot of the affiliate marketers who are quite hard on selling and their audience is actually looking at that right information about the product, they will only talk about the product. So they will talk about the product, some of its features, some of the benefits. Some other affiliate marketers have gone to an extra length and they have spoken about how other users have used that product. Some affiliate marketers actually incorporate the user testimonials, the feedback, the reviews, so that it uh, creates that uh, social proofing and it also increases your credibility among your audience. So if you are someone who has recently started or who's establishing yourself in the affiliate industry, that is also one thing you could do where you can try to incorporate the social proofing in your uh, videos, where you can try to include some of the customer feedback and testimonials, the user reviews, so that people will uh, build that trust in the product and the recommendation that you are giving about the product. And sometimes, like I have seen uh, some of the affiliate marketers, they will actually talk about the advice on how to use the product, how not to use the product. If there is something special that uh, uh, users should know before buying the product, then you can actually use those inf uh, useful information snippets in your uh, video. You can also like, you know, uh, if there is any, so related to your niche, if you think there is any statistic that is going to be really important to your user, then it is important for you to actually talk about it. So for example, uh, like, you know, if you are trying to create a price comparison table and for affiliate marketers, if they are doing it manually, it can take hours and hours to create a price comparison table. But uh, if somebody wants to sell the price comparison table tool to them, they can simply say that, you know, you can actually avoid five hours of work and you can actually do it in 30 seconds. So if there is anything that you feel is going to resonate well with your niche or with your audience, you should always try to bring it. Or if you think that there is something like, you know, a book or a product or anything relevant you can recommend, then please do that. One thing you should bear in mind is that you have only those first three to five seconds to impress the audience. So if you don't create a good first impression, chances of them closing the video are very high and they may not really consume the content. And in some of these uh, marketing, the word of mouth really helps because the bite size content is also shareable. A lot of people, when they like it, will naturally share it among their audience or with their friends and family. So that way you are able to tap into the network that doesn't really belong to you directly. And you you can open the door of opportunities from there as well. So always try to, whenever you're creating the uh, bite size format uh, videos, please always bear in mind that it should be visually appealing. It should have very beautiful images or something that like, you know, you see it and you want to click on it and try to give the information in the first three to five seconds so that people will stick to it and would want to uh, look into it. So now we've learned like, you know, the importance of creating the bite size videos. So let's go to the next strategy, which is uh, about creating the user generated content. So we all have seen how important the user generated content is because almost 92% of the consumers would actually uh, 
believe in the referrals from their friends and family or from their wider network. And for a lot of the consumers, rather 90% of the consumers, authenticity is the key. So they don't want to always hear from the celebrities and what creams or the moisturizers or the products they are endorsing. They actually want to hear from common people like you and me, that what product we think is useful and uh, we would want to recommend. And there is like for 84% of the consumers, they do trust the peer recommendations more than what the brand has to say about the product. And this is where we know like the user generated content is important. And in the past few years, we have seen the clear shift from the brand side as well, where earlier brands used to create this content, hire the influencers and make them uh, talk about it. But now a lot of the individuals are actually creating the content and almost 85% of the product related content is being created by the creators and the influencers. So from the past experience, we know that user generated content has immense value in convincing end users to buy something. But now in 2023, the shift we have seen is the following, that earlier it was the brands who was trying to get the user generated content. But some of the successful affiliate marketers in our community have actually started using other creators and influencers for their content. So now they are actually going to other platforms and channels and getting the creators and influencers to talk about the product that they are interested in promoting. And what happens with that? So one of the things is that it brings authenticity into the content. So instead of me as a creator all the time talking about the product, I can actually ask some of the other creators and influencers to talk about that product. And if they are someone who is already passionate about that niche or they talk about that category or the product often, then it is something that will resonate well with their audience as well as whenever somebody is seeing that video, they would know that the person is already passionate about the field. The person is already passionate about the product. So the trust factor will be there. And then when they are creating a user generated content, like some an individual, a real person is creating it it tends to get higher engagement and more interaction because now not only your influencer, uh, I mean, your audience will be interacting with the content, it's the uh, audience of the other user also, like the creator and the influencer would also be interacting with the content. So that way, what one content that was created now gets multiple user base and people from different segments will start uh, interacting and engaging. And when somebody asks a question, it will ignite the spark in other uh, end users as well. And others may also start asking different questions because one question may lead to the other, to the other, to the other. And that is where user generated content generally helps a lot in affiliate marketing. And that is one of the ways that we can actually see a lot of success going forward as well. And often the argument that's put in favor of user generated content is its cost effectiveness. Because just imagine like you being one person who's trying to create all the content and like, you know, just trying to promote it on different channels. And then you are able to reach only to a limited number of people or the audience in your network. But what if you're actually able to spread it? So you are paying little, little to the other creators and influencer, but you are actually able to tap into their network as well. And when you are trying to uh, use other creators and uh, influencers, you are naturally going to do some background check on them, their ability to drive traffic conversions and sales for you. So that way you can actually create a good user generated content uh, with cost effectiveness. And the reach and amplification effect of the content is very high because now you're not the only one who's promoting it, but there are other people in your network who are also going to promote it. And whenever you do that, there is a lot of diversity factor as well, because when you are creating a content, you have one perspective in mind and you are only keeping that perspective in mind when you create the content. But when 10 people create the same content, they come with different interpretations, different ways of using the product, different like, you know, use cases. So that is where like uh, uh, end users benefit from the collective wisdom and exchange of ideas. So now again, the thing is like how you can do it. So how you can uh, create content using other creators. So there are a lot of platforms that you could potentially go to, like Fiverr and all, where you can list what your requirements are. But in our community, uh, we have seen the TikTok 
creator marketplace working really good. And that is what I'm going to focus on. There are other platforms, like I was mentioning, that you could potentially go to. But because we have seen this particular platform working really well for our community, I'm going to focus on that. So whenever you use the TikTok creator marketplace, we have seen that it's quite uh, simple to collaborate with the creators on it because TikTok has actually listed all the creators. You can uh, uh, you can search based on the category or the niche. You can do it based on the country or the subscriber base or the views. So you can do a lot of uh, filtering out when you want to work with creators. So the process is quite simple. You log on to the creator mar- uh, TikTok creator marketplace. You list your requirement. You can see a lot of creators there. And then you can very easily collaborate uh, with them there itself. What happens like when you are going to a marketplace like that, which is already quite popular and they have millions of creators on the platform, you can handpick or you can choose from a very diverse set of talent. So you are no longer restricted to the people you know or whatever the results a search engine is throwing to you. You can actually go to the platform and you can pick and choose who you really want to work with because it could be that uh, a fitness instructor based in some countries way more relevant to you than someone who is uh, quite nearby to you. And this is where you can actually access a lot of different talent and at a quite uh, reasonable rate because you can see how much the creator is wanting to uh, creator is charging and what sort of conversions, clicks, impressions, views they can bring for their videos. And then you can have like a a more informed decision that who do you want to work with and why do you want to work with? The third advantage of using uh, the user generated content or working with TikTok creator marketplace is that you actually get that authentic and creative content because we all know and we have seen tons of videos on TikTok where uh, Content is quite creative. Some of them is hilarious, some is engaging, some are quite informative. So we get all sorts of content on TikTok and it depends on like what sort of tone we want or what sort of promote uh, product we are trying to promote. And then accordingly, we can actually select the creator that we want to work with. And one of the other advantages of working with creators or influencers to generate content is that you can have a very targeted campaign. So you can actually decide that in this particular month, because you want to promote only one type of product, you're going to target all the creators who are good at creating content in that particular niche or that category. And you don't have to really diversify yourself that, okay, I will just do a hit or miss calculation where I will work with 50 creators and I will see which one works and which doesn't. You can actually be very targeted that I want to work with creators who have at least 1 million views on videos and who can get at least um, 10 impressions or 100 impressions or 1000 impressions. So you can actually decide your own parameters and you can have really targeted campaigns. So now, so far, we have learned about two strategies. So first strategy is about creating the bite-sized content. And second is about using uh, the user-generated content that brand has so far anyways done it. Now we are trying to make it uh, to, uh, more appealing to the individuals as well. So let's go to the third strategy, which is about launch jacking. And this is an interesting uh, strategy, I know, because a lot of the people may have already tried it. Some may have succeeded at it. Some may not have succeeded at it. So this would be a time where I can actually talk about some of the ways people have done it and what are really the advantages of lawn jacking. Because we do get questions about uh, lawn jacking a lot because some people feel that, okay, it is not for them. They don't know when the products are going to get launched. It's very difficult for them to understand. So I just want to clear some of the uh, myths around it or I want to talk a little bit about how launch jacking is done. So generally, like, you know, whenever a product is going to get launched, you can actually start talking about it beforehand. So you can build the hype. You can actually let your community know that something is going to come and then you can just create that, uh, build that excitement among your audience. So what generally happens when you do lawn jacking, some of the advantages are that you can actually do it for both physical products as well as digital products, and they work really well for both. So in case of physical products, you can actually do for some electronic products, you can do for like phones and gadgets, or you could do for fashion products as well, but it may not always work that well. 
because we have seen often in the past that it was more so the gadgets electronic products the laptops and all that work quite well and in terms of digital products yes you can go for different types of softwares or uh, you could go for nfts so what generally happens why a lot of the affiliate marketers go for launch jacking is that because since they uh, already get some information beforehand they have the product reviews they can actually give an honest view on the product and its usage and all and they build up the excitement among the audience on the launch day when they have all this material ready and they have launched it on different channels there is sudden surge in the traffic and when there is a surge in the traffic naturally the conversions come and if you have created very uh, engaging and interacting content naturally the conversions will be also very high and then if you are someone who can um, actually connect with the creator of the product beforehand they will give you a lot of blueprints they will give you uh, they will also give you a product maybe for free and you could actually review uh, review that product you can actually build a trusting relationship with the brand and uh, you can actually start working with them collaborate with them and it could also be a there could also be a possibility of collaborating on a longer term basis not really restricting yourself to that particular product launch what we see with some of the successful community members uh, is that they were also able to negotiate a better commission rate with these brands so before the product launched they actually went up to the brand saying that okay i know you're going to launch an x product and i'm quite interested my audience is relevant i am into that niche and i would create x y and z um, uh, material and the inventory for you is it possible for you to give me instead of 10% commission on every sale can you give me 15% commission and in like 7 out of 10 times if you have the relevant audience and you have driven sales for the brand in the past they may agree to it they may include some tiered based incentive saying that okay if you drive first 10000 dollars you will get this for the next 10000 it will be higher and so on but generally brands when they are launching a new product they do tend to give better deals as well and by creating all the inventory and the content and the videos beforehand you also establish yourself as an authority in that particular uh, product launch like you are the one everybody would be looking to whenever there is uh, an iphone launching because there are certain channels we all may be following when if you're passionate about a product so for example if the new iphone is launching we may know the channel that we would be going and uh, che checking for the review or when uh, samsung phone is launching we may have a channel we would go and follow so launch tracking can be really beneficial if you are able to like you know understand which product will be launching one of the things that you should uh, be very careful about when you do launch uh, jacking is that we should always promote the product that we have personally used it so i know it may sound here like how can we do it because if it is something that we are trying to do at launch how we are going to actually use the product beforehand so what happens in such cases is that sometimes the brand may give you the product little bit before and you could actually try it or if it is something that you haven't really tried it before then when you get it at that time you do the review because we always say that in order to establish the trust and credibility among your audience you should always promote the product that you uh, personally use and always be honest about the review it's not like just because it's a new product that has launched in the market and you really like the brand so you're going to say everything positive about it or because you are not really into the brand and they've launched a new product you are going to be totally against it always try to have a balanced view which is an honest view so if you think it has more pros than cons then please mention that and always like you know the trick in succeeding at launch jacking is to not start building the content or create a uh, external or internal links after the product is launched it's like you know you know that in 2 months time a product is going to get launched and you start working on it now so you start creating all your materials or your videos and your short links the short formats reels and everything now and keep it ready so the moment product goes live you already have those Uh, videos ready and before the product goes live you can actually start building the excitement by giving little little snippets or giving uh, uh, some sneak uh, sneak view of the product or how it's going to look or some designs like that and always like you know when you are uh, doing the launch jacking 
please ensure that you tap into multiple sources for reaching out to the audience. So do not really restrict yourself that, okay, I have a good email list and I have like 200,000 subscribers or quarter of a million subscribers and I will just email them. Email them, talk about it on all your social channels, be it YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitch, whichever channel you are part of, talk everywhere about it. Reach out to as many people as you can potentially do. And we always recommend that whenever you are into affiliate marketing, I know we have a lot of temptation that, okay, you know what, I have a great list of people on my WhatsApp and I do want to WhatsApp them about the list. You can absolutely do that. You can share the link with them. But sometimes uh, in the past, we have seen that brands often like to uh, know the source, that where the source came, what was the quality of traffic and so on. So that is where we say that, yes, you can use all the channels that you like to, but always try to give some level of transparency to the brand as well, that what is the traffic source and what is the quality and where all you have posted the engagement and so on. And what also happens like you know some of the uh, affiliate marketers in our community they were able to get uh, good traction on the uh, launch jacking because they went an extra step they went to the brand and they said that what if they start promoting the product among the community can brand give their audience some exclusive coupon or a discount or some exclusive offers. It could be like, you know, you buy this product and you get some auxiliary product for 50% off or 80% off or 20% off. And that was quite like, you know, helpful for them to build the momentum. Some of the creators, they actually uh, shared some relevant material or they also hopped on call with the end user who was really interested in buying. And now I know that you may have the question that, oh, we cannot do it for thousands of people. That is true. Because here, some of the creators that I'm referring to had like the high value items. So they were doing it for the electronics and for every electronic uh, product that was sold, they were making roughly around 300 to 400 dollars per sale so for them it made sense to actually have a conversation with the uh, audience maybe for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and clarify any doubts so launch checking when done um, properly or smartly can actually bring in a lot of results it can actually have a surge in your traffic it can actually reach out to wider people because whenever a launch is happening there is already a lot of momentum that is being built by the brand so whenever you post a content about it and if you are the authority in it and you are the first one to do it chances of it going viral or being viewed by a lot of people is also very high so you can use it to your benefit now let's talk about the fourth strategy, which is about using Pinterest. And uh, I cannot emphasize enough that how much the affiliate marketers in our community are benefiting from Pinterest. There are quite a few advantages. I know some of these you may already know about it. First and foremost is about like, you know, get, it's a free traffic source because every time somebody clicks on the pins they get directed to the original website and that is where you get uh, get the traffic that has high purchase intent that is organic and that is referred so that way it's uh, one of the best traffic to have because people who are really interested in the product have only clicked on the pin and when they come to your website chances of them buying something from there are really high and also what happens like, you know, on Pinterest, as per their report, they mentioned that almost uh, the users, the median household income for them is $75,000 a year, which suggests or which shows that people on Pinterest or have high purchasing power. So it is something like, you know, if there is a product that is unique, that is interesting, people may not really hesitate to buy because they have the purchasing capacity. And almost 83% of the US consumers would look into Pinterest if they really want to buy something. And that's also, again, really high. And on Pinterest, it's also possible for you to target on niches. You don't have to just target everyone and every, uh, anyone and everyone. You can actually filter out that, okay, you only want to target women. And there are almost like 30, 33% women in US are on Pinterest. So you can have very specific categories of target on Pinterest. So that way you want to create a product, you just want to create any content, you can target and be quite relevant about it. And how to uh, do it on Pinterest? It's like, you know, like 
every other strategy you need to create something visually appealing where it should be like you know people look at it they like the images they want to click on it and they want to visit the site and always try to find the trending products there also on pinterest because pinterest will also send a lot of traffic so if there is a product that is trending and your uh, audience will probably like it you are in that niche then please go for it and how many post generally like you know you should put on pinterest so we say ideally it's anywhere between 5 to 10 it uh, every day so it depends on the niche you are in or the product that you are trying to say uh, sell or promote but it is generally like you know 5 to 10 images that you should be pinning every day and one of the things that uh, some of the affiliate marketers in our community often do or they always do is include a description and title for the product promotion because what happens every time you're including the title and the description it will also get ranked on the search engines so that way you will also get traffic from there so then you should use pinterest as well as one of the most effective affiliate marketing strategy and we have seen it's working quite well for our community members so so far in the webinar we have learned about how to spot the trending products and then we have learned four strategies on how to promote them so first strategy was about creating the bite sized content and then the second strategy was about using user generated content the third one was about launch hacking and the fourth one uh, is about uh, using pinterest now the fifth and the last strategy is about using ai for rapidly scaling and this particular strategy i'm going to talk about in a very brief way because the next webinar is a full fledged webinar we are conducting on using ai for affiliate marketing because we have seen the growing trend now among our community members where they are using ai to have affiliate marketing at scale and we cannot emphasize that how much it is advantageous to them how much it's benefiting them and how much it has helped them increase their affiliate income so what are the advantages because for like with other ai tools and softwares some of the definite or the obvious advantages are that it actually saves time it is efficient it makes you more productive it is more accurate you can uh, use limited resources and it gives you more insights you know how to optimize things because you have more data points to make your decisions on so you are not really struggling to find the data to find the trends to find what is converting not converting how many backlinks you got from which sources and what is the domain authority and all a lot of these things you can actually get on your fingertips a lot of times affiliate marketers are doing repetitive tasks and that can be avoided or uh, could be outsourced to the ai tools it is very easy to use ai and analyze large data sets and you can understand the insights immediately you can understand what is trending what is not trending what is working what's not working and when it comes to content creation we know there are a lot of ai tools that help you in writing content it can help you optimize it it can help you create script it can also help you identify new opportunities in your niche or in your uh, particular product uh, sector so it's really important to use ai to scale your affiliate marketing and how you can do it is like you know you can actually identify new opportunities you can actually optimize your campaigns you can uh, use the use ai to write some of the blog posts to create content to actually you know simplify your life and you can also use it to optimize your seo so so for this particular topic related to ai we will be having a dedicated webinar next time and i will uh, suggest everybody and recommend everybody to come and attend it because that is where we would be covering everything related to ai and affiliate marketing that how we can use ai in affiliate marketing to uh, generate results at scale so this was it really guys from my side where i have covered the uh, trending products how to identify them and i have discussed the five strategies on how to once you identify the products that you want to promote i have discussed the five strategies on how to promote it so in case if you have any questions that will be great
And one of the things I want to highlight here is that we have an affiliate program with uh, a, a referral program for Shopper, where we provide 30% referral income for life of the customer. So in case you are referring anyone, you will earn 30% of the uh, monthly income from that user. So please make use of it and let your friends and family and all your uh, people in your network know about it. So we will be sharing more details about it in the follow-up email. And also please keep an eye on your emails because there may be some exciting offers in it for you. So I've got a first question here about lawn jacking. Uh, it's an interesting question that how you can use lawn jacking and what products will go well in lawn jacking. Okay, that's an interesting question, definitely, because what sort of products you can promote in lawn jacking, it really depends on the niche you have and the type of audience you got in your network. But sometimes what we've seen that lawn jacking works really well uh, for uh, the electronic products, the mobile devices, the gadgets, because that is where the hype is already being built by the brand and a lot of people are talking about it. So one of the things to watch out for when doing the lawn jacking or using uh, this technique is that don't go for products that really don't have that momentum already in the market. So if nobody's talking about it, then even if you try to like you know negotiate the best deal, you create the best videos and the content, maybe not enough people are interested in it. So try to go for products and the niches that people are really interested in. They are always talking about it. They want to know more about it. They are researching about it online. So that is where chances of your content being highlighted are uh, really high. Another question is which tool have to use for trends? Okay, so for uh, understanding the trends, you can actually use like the four different techniques I was talking about. You could actually research on the e-commerce platforms or the uh, marketplaces. You could also look into the social channels. You could also like, you know, for the trends, you can uh, do the keyword research tool from Google Trends because that will give you rich data and insights about what products are trending well. And you could also actually follow some of the industry experts and influential people in your niche so that you can understand the type of products and topics they are talking about because they will have a pulse in the market, pulse of the market and they will be only talking about the products and uh, uh, categories that will matter to the audience. Okay, another question is on... Uh, if the user generated content is uh, economical okay now that's an uh, that's a very interesting question to be honest because yes there are always whenever you are uh, using any affiliate marketing strategy you need to always weigh your cost and benefits and you need to see whether it's going to be profitable for you or not and the way to do is that to uh, choose your creators in a way that you know that they would be able to drive the sale that you want them to drive. So let me give an example here. So for example, you are promoting a product that will give you $50 in commission. So if you want to earn $50 in commission, then you need to go for influencer who can at least like, you know, drive you two or three sales if you have to pay that influencer $100 for creating the content. So if the creator is charging $100 and you earn $50 per sale, then at least you need two sales. But to be on a safer side and everything, you need influencer who can bring you at least three sales. So whenever you're deciding on which influencers to work with, you should always look into that aspect that how much sales or uh, conversions they can potentially bring. It may not happen that on the first instance, you will hit the right type of in creators. It could happen that you chose to work with five and three did well, two didn't do well. But over a period of time, when you start uh, interacting with them more and you work, collaborate with more influencers and creators, you will also get a hang of like, you know, okay, this creator may bring some uh, revenue. This may not really help me bring any brand visibility or awareness because the creators that you work with will also bring different types of results. So some will bring you brand awareness where a lot of other people will know you. Some will actually bring you the hardcore numbers of conversions and sales. So you can actually pick and choose what you really want to go for. So now the question is again about the user-generated content. 
that uh, what product should we go for so it's really uh, difficult for me to say that what product should you go for when you are creating uh, you are going for user generated content because unlike some of the other marketing strategies and techniques where you can pinpoint on the roi so you know that if if you are spending 100 dollars in ads you may actually make 200 dollars in sales it's very difficult to talk about it when it comes to user generated content because particularly if you're going to use the tiktokers who are going to create the content it's difficult to predict if the content is going to fly or it will just not fly if in case it becomes viral chances of you making hundreds of dollars are quite high but if it doesn't go well then you may not even make $1 from the sales there so so far in our community we are also not able to uh, assess the trend or the pattern that okay if you are creating let's say promoting 10 such products at least one product will go viral and you will make a lot of money because so far in our community also we are seeing quite a lot of subjectivity it's really like hit or miss you know that some products will just hit be hit and you will make some money out of it but in case of others you may not really make a lot of money uh, on that so now i have another question on the ai tools yes uh, so this is an interesting question again like what ai tool you can use for content creation so there are a lot of ai tools uh, out there in the market that you can use and it depends like you know what sort of uh, content also you want to create so if you are trying to create some blogs i know uh, a lot of people are using chat gpt now and they are creating quite a rich content and quite informative and insightful content using chat gpt but if you are trying to proofread or you are just trying to like you know correct your grammar there are other tools grammarly wordtune that will help you refine uh, what you are writing if you are trying to create some new ideas i know a few uh, creators who have used chat gpt for that as well so there are a lot of uh, different ways you can use the ai tool but like i mentioned we will be covering this topic more in depth the next time so i'm going to take one last question here in case you have uh, any okay so there's a question about how much we should be spending on user generated content so that is also like i may not be in the best position to give you any definite answer to it like if you should keep aside like 100 dollars a month on user generated content or you should spend like a thousand dollars it really depends on like you know the niche you are in and the type of people you want to reach and how many sales you want to uh generate for covering the cost but always whenever you are spending on anything you should always bear in mind the stage you are at so for example in one of the previous webinars we were asked the question that at what point should the affiliate marketer start spending money on the paid ads and our answer or my answer was that you should only do it when you have already started seeing some traction and you have a community and you know your content is uh, getting well received in the industry because unless and until you reach that stage where you know that your content is something good and everybody's liking it and people want to consume it you shouldn't really spend money on that so at the same way like you know when you want to experiment with the user generated content you should always start with a smaller budget i would say because test the waters see if your niche is uh, going to like it or they are not going to like it okay so last question if we create a coupon code in shopper can anyone in shopper using your plugin pick up that coupon code so if you get it uh, added to the uh, platform then people can actually use if that's what you want them to use because generally whenever the coupon codes get added onto the platform then whenever somebody is buying from that store the coupon will automatically get applied so people will have access to that okay guys so i'm going to wrap up the uh, webinar here it was so lovely to have you all and be part of our webinar and like i was uh, mentioning before uh, we are conducting these webinars at regular intervals because the this is the 
time and opportunity for us to share our knowledge and insights we gather from our community and give something back to the community in terms of the valuable insights so if there is anything that you would want us to cover then please let us know uh, the next webinar is going to be about uh, how we can use ai in uh, affiliate marketing and um, take affiliate marketing at uh, scale and uh, we also have the referral program so please make the most use of it and we would be sending a quick email about the feedback so it will be great if you can please give your honest feedback on the webinar and what you would want to see the next time and uh, please also keep an eye on your emails because there might be a surprise offer that may be sent to you all in the email thank you very much guys it was lovely to have you all here and see you next time bye bye